time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. And here's your host, John Chapman. What is going on, Faithful? It is Thursday, which means I'm with a really, really good friend, and I'm very, very happy because uh, we're going to start the show off right. Um, I need consoling. Um, news just broke right before we hit record. Jason Verrett, who has been through so much, man. Uh, th- this one really, it hurts. It hurts, you know, as a fan. It hurts as a football just fan, whether you're not as a human not, being, matter. it just sucks because yeah. this is somebody that's just been through hell and back. Terrace is Achilles yesterday in practice, and he is now out for the season. Somebody that fought so hard to come back um, from, I mean, you could just count how many injuries he's had. And yeah, I, anger is an appropriate emotion. You know, I, I'm usually very, very PG with my language selection and all those things. I dropped an F-bomb on Twitter. Uh, like this is where I think those emotions are real and having empathy for somebody that you've been, you know, going for for so long, that's okay. Uh, it's totally okay to feel that way. Um, and so, yeah, man, I just, I, I hate, you know, we have a whole show planned and we're going to spend time going through the NFC and all those things, but this right here just sucks. Uh, that's all there is to it. And somebody that has turned into a leader of this team, he's been there for so damn long and mm-hmm. he was going to get a play against his first game against his ex team. Yep. And this guy was a pro bowl level, uh, cornerback when he was healthy this is from the start when he has hit the league running it has just been injuries i can't think of another player with this much talent who is derailed by such big time injuries we've seen injury prone players who you know miss a few games here and there but how many times have we seen the words jason Ferret done for the season it's heartbreaking as a human being i feel for this guy because he's so talented he's such a good guy from all the reports that i've seen um, just just a classy veteran, and for him not to get his shot, and for it to happen in practice, it's not even like he's out there competing in a game. Man, you just got to feel for him. Yeah, and, you know, the, the the question goes back to, man, like, and I see people putting in there, like, injury prone and all that kind of stuff. You got this dude for pennies. You got him for pennies. Um, it wasn't like you were taking a huge gamble. It was, hey, we're going to let him slowly come back because of what he's done for this team. He, he put up one almost all-pro level cornerback play back in 2019 or 2020. And so, like, you've got to be thankful for what happened. But it's not like he ever broke the bank or anything like that. This was a bonus play. Um, and I don't think that the 49ers need to drastically kind of respond and go sign a free agent. I don't think they will. You've got young corners. You've you've got Charvarius Ward, who's incredible. Then you've got the three young guys. You've got Diomedor Lenore, Samuel Womack, and Ambry Thomas. Plus, Quantrez Knight, uh, still sitting in the wings on your practice squad as well that you're trying to coach up, who are very, very high on. So I don't think any major adjustments need to take place at the cornerback in the cornerback room currently. And Jimmy Ward helps with that as well because he's been playing nickel. So you've got the depth there. You still got Dante Johnson. This is just, it's a gut punch um, for the people in that locker room that have seen number two just go out there and get back to this shape. And he's been back. And right before he comes out, uh, ah, next man up. Yeah, I, I see that. I appreciate that, John. Yeah, but man, at the same time, it's just like, ah, this sucks. Uh, the dude deserved everything. And he got nothing, and through no fault of his own. ACLs and Achilles and all those things. Yeah, right there, Kenny. Hope he becomes a coach. Yeah, I, I, I would freaking love that. And yeah, I'm, I'm assuming this will do it. Um, yeah, I'm yeah, assuming I think do it. I'm surprised he hasn't retired previously. I think that that kind of speaks to his uh, tenacity, his his drive. Uh, he has always been a very smart player, so it would be nice to see him go the coaching route. That, that was one of his strengths is he just was always a guy that was in position to make a play uh, back when he was playing for the Chargers uh, and, his, you know, the time that he got to contribute for San Francisco as well. Uh, but that's my biggest thing is for the person. You know, I mean, yeah. yes, it, it, it's not good news for the Niners, but this guy in particular, he's a good dude who had the talent and just continued to get 
injured. Uh, and like you said, Achilles, these are the kind of things that you can just step wrong and it happens. It's not even like a bad hit or so I, I just, my heart goes out to him. I will say this, like he was on his salary this year was basically the vet minimum 800,000, um, which, you know, we'll see what happens with the injury settlement and all that. He's made 25 million in his career, uh, through nine seasons. So most of that he made with the Chargers. Um, you know, he's been with the 40 hours for four years, and he's collected $8 million. He gave one all-pro year and backed up and gave some other solid games. Definitely you got your value. I mean, $8 million for an all-pro corner for one year is a bargain. So it's not like he took advantage of the 40 hours financially by any stretch. Uh, glad that he's got this money. Um, generational wealth, you know, just trying to find a bright side in this. Um, I know it doesn't make up for it, but. Yeah, hope he sticks around. The dude's been incredible. Uh, John, I saw a question in the chat around the number of injuries. Um, he has now had two Achilles tears, two ACL tears, a severe ankle injury that kept him off for 15 games, a torn labrum. I mean, come on. That's just that's just bad luck. You know, that that's beyond, you know, any particular thing. That's just bad luck. And that's why I feel for this guy so much. Yeah, it sucks, man. And again, I don't think the 49ers really need to do anything different personnel-wise. Personally, I don't think they will. They might look and maybe bring in some more practice squad guys. I know Richard Sherman's name's been put out there. Do not. I love Richard Sherman. Would love to have him in this locker room. I do not want him starting at cornerback. Maybe yeah. nickel, maybe safety. But I, I think those days on the outside... I, just not something I would be too interested in. He personally. seems happy on, on Amazon on Thursday nights. Let's leave we'll him there. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Uh, best of luck to Jason Verrett. Now, for the rest of the show, and very, very excited about this because this is a huge week. Uh, 49ers coming off a bye. You know, I want to frame a lot of our conversation around this idea. Can the 49ers catch the Seahawks? But – it's not just them played. Obviously, you got the Seahawks playing the early game in Germany. We're going to detail that. You also have another huge NFC West matchup between two wounded teams, the Cardinals and the Rams, who both quarterbacks uh, showed up on the injury report. We're going to detail that, and then we're going to leave the episode talking 49ers, Chargers, some Sunday night football. So, Brian, uh, let's pick up with some Seahawks talk. They play first. They're in first place. Yep. Talk to us about kind of last week and what you got going on and what you see for this week coming up. I always like to start off celebrating my wins if I had them. I did correctly call that the Flex Seahawks on were going to handle those Arizona Cardinals, and the game wasn't really ever in doubt. Um, and I had the Rams game picked correctly until the final, what, nine seconds? And they just couldn't. That offense, that three, and I don't even credit the defense uh, for L.A. because they stopped them once. They stopped right. them when they needed to. Rams offense goes out there, goes three and out, doesn't move the ball at all, doesn't really try to chew clock, doesn't try to get a, a first down. And um, you give Brady too many chances. I don't care how bad this Bucks team is, Brady's going to find a way to win. So I would have, I was almost undefeated on my NFC West picks. But yeah, let's talk about the first ever uh, NFL game in uh, Germany. Munich, Germany is going to be between the Seahawks and the Bucks. Uh, Bucks favored, I have it by two and a half. Mm -hmm. Um I think this is a product, if you're actually watching these two teams this year, and forget the names and forget the the, the precedent and the history, you would not be giving the Buccaneers a two and a half point spread here. I think this is purely because the Bucks. look, is it possible that Tampa Bay can uh, capitalize on finally eking out a victory last week and, you know, Tom Brady coming in the conference press crop and saying, oh, this feels awesome. Sure. Do I think it'll happen? No. This Bucks team has so many problems across the board. One of, if not the worst, running offenses in the NFL. There goes your balance right there. Uh, not the same offensive line they've had in past years, whether it's due to retirement, injury, or, or, or guys losing to free agency, so they're not able to protect Brady. Brady is not in sync with his receivers, and his receivers are dropping balls. And on top of that, the defense has been a weak point, especially against the run. Uh, and what does the Seattle Seahawks like to do under Pete Carroll? They like to run the ball. They've been able to really control time of possession in games. Uh, Kenneth Walker has been fantastic. He's in the running. I think he's actually number one odds right now for NFC or NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. Um, this is just setting up nicely for the Seahawks to continue winning. It is the Bucks. I don't, you know, if I'm putting a confidence level in this game, it's not high, but I am picking Seattle to cover and win this game. Uh, you can't say there's a difference in travel, even though technically Florida might be a little, it's not a big difference in travel time. <laughs> no. Like these are the kind of things I try to decide, like, is it going to affect the Seahawks more? It doesn't. 
So I'm just going to pick a Seattle defense that is playing very, very well lately. So different than they played at the beginning of the year. A Seattle offense that has played very efficient and hasn't had a lot of turnovers. Uh, Geno just seems tailor-made for that offense. And a Seattle offense that is really wants everything to start with the ground game, going up against a Bucks team. Oh, by the way, they also lost um, uh, Shaq Barrett for the year. So there goes one of their big pass rushing uh, pieces on Tampa Bay. Uh, they're they're better against the pass than they are against the run, but I don't think that matters to Seattle. They've got playmakers. They want to control the ball. Uh, so I like Seattle to win this game and definitely to cover that two and a half points. You know, it, it, just watching these two teams play, it's different. You know, the Bucks have scored over 22 points once this year. That's it. Like, it is an inept offense. You look at Seattle, they scored over 22 points six out of the last seven games. Um, by the way, that are... Bucks team, the Bucks game where they scored over 22 they were just trying to catch up. They were getting blasted by the Chiefs, so we have to keep that in mind, too. It wasn't yeah, even a so winning like, game. It, I don't know. Like, okay, find the script for how the Bucks win. Can they win this game? For sure. You got Tom Brady. You had a miracle last week, but he's done that so many times. Can they hang around in this game in a way that, you know, you can get some fourth-quarter magic? I think it's possible. Uh, you know, I'm way more scared of the Bucks than I am the Seahawks. I really am like matchup wise, you know, the 49ers have both still on the schedule. I'm not too concerned about the Seahawks. I understand they're playing good ball, but we just match up too well against them. I mean, we destroyed them earlier in the year. We'll play them Thursday night um, coming up later on, but I'm with you, man. Um, I just don't get it. The, the disrespect on the coaching, which again, you pick a side to go with coaching in this game. You're 1000% going uh, with the Seattle Seahawks offense, yep. defense, I give it to the Bucks. Okay, I'm cool with that, even with their injuries. But even then, it's it's, but it's like a, it's not a huge advantage, right? Yeah, uh, there is one. Let, let you mentioned what is the narrative? There's one slight narrative that I can see Tampa Bay pulling this off. It's one I'm not believing in right now. But let's let's give a hypothetical, John. So th- the biggest thing with the Bucks is not talent. It has been uh, a lack of. Uh, you know, being out of sync, a, a lack of almost effort and motivation. Um, they've had a few losses of talent, especially on the offensive line, but it hasn't been drastic. Not like the Rams. The Rams, I actually said this last week on your show, John, it was, the Bucks are broken. The Rams are just, they're just <laughs> missing stuff, right? Um, so it, let, let's say this win galvanizes them. Let's say Brady snaps, snaps out of whatever he's doing. They still have Mike Evans. If Godwin is is getting a little bit better each week after his, you know, coming back from his ACL injury, uh, Julio Jones is at least healthy to be a third target there. Kate mm-hmm. Otten is coming on a little bit as a tight end. I'm um, a pretty big Kate Otten fan. He's uh, showing it. He, it, it. he scored the the first tight end touchdown for the Bucks this year in the game winning touchdown. This is a guy they were used to having Gronk. They didn't have a single touchdown by tight ends until that game winning touchdown. How crazy is that with the Tom Brady team? Uh, and what if Rashad White starts to come along? They start to give him even more opportunities than Leonard Fournette so I can see that win at the end of the Rams game galvanizing this team do I think it'll happen no but that's the path because the talent is there this team is more talented than the Seahawks the Buccaneers are top to bottom essentially more talented than the Seahawks but there's just something missing and, and it probably is coaching and it's probably Brady too with his personal life but the point is there's a lot of stuff that are not connecting even after this win uh you got Todd Bowles saying something about it's not an effort and then you have Brady and Leftwich saying it is a lack of effort. So it's like if there's even there's still there's a disconnect there. And for that reason, I just this Seahawks team is playing with so much confidence right now. I have to go with them. Yeah, I mean, I hope they lose. I, I'm pulling for the Bucks, which I was last week too. And I hate Tom Brady more than almost anybody else in the NFL. I can't stand him. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of where we are. So I, I'm probably going to be putting in a teaser bet this week with the Seattle uh, getting those extra points because they just play everybody so close, and the Bucks can't blow anybody out. Um, so that's going to be one of my teaser bets where I, I take Seattle at the points for sure. Yeah, um, like but, that. yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting matchup. Now, before we jump to our next one, Brian, so excited next week. The 49ers rush road trips going international, baby. Our very first trip uh, south of the border to Mexico City. So excited about this one. 49ers rush road trip dot com. Uh, going to be an absolute blast. Look for the flag wherever it is. Again, uh, today is the last day if you have not booked your tickets um, to the hotel. So we have all of the hotels reserved. Today's the last day. So go to 49ers rush road trip dot com. Click on the Mexico City game. Go down to the description, and you'll see the link for the Marriott Reformer where we're all staying. 
Um, we're getting picked up from the hotel and going to the party and going back uh, with coach buses and all that kind of stuff. We got you. We're taking care of you. You just got to get to the hotel, and I'm saving you 80 bucks a night on the hotel. I don't make any money on that. Uh, just We discounted the rooms as much as best we could for that. So, uh, so excited about this. And then we're taking coach buses to the game, too. So we got you covered. All you got to do is get to the hotel, buy your game tickets. We got everything else. 49ers Rush Road Trip. Dot com. That's where you can Viva get Viva La Mexico. I love it. I'm so pumped, man. Wayne Breezy's coming out. We've got a good, man, a lot of people buying tickets. Uh, we are probably going to sell out. I don't think we're going to have tickets at the door for our tailgate or the night before party. So if that's something that you want to do, uh, we do have limited space for both of those because we only got the two buses. So uh, make sure you you go do that because once we hit that number, we, we got to close off sales, sadly. We're not going to be able to add anymore. There's only so many seats. Uh, so head over there. Check that out. 49ersRushRoadTrip.com. Now, all right. We kind of talked Rams a little bit. Yep. Cardinals continue to be a mess. They're playing each other this week. Oh, there's this could be an episode in and of itself, my friend. Take it away. Cardinals at Rams. Yeah, this one was, was not easy to pick. These are two kind of like the Bucks Rams last week, except Arizona is just a lot less talented than Tampa Bay. These are two teams that are uninspiring right now. Um, and now you have Stafford on the con concussion protocol out of nowhere. It wasn't announced after the game, which actually that's important for the time frame. There's what a minimum yep. time frame you have to clear the fact from that when I you it report was, it from when you report it, I believe it was Tuesday. So it, he has to basically clear everything perfectly in order to be cleared for Sunday. Um, but that, and I after that Tua stuff, they're not going to allow shortcuts here. Correct. I mean, there's they're, so they're much going to be on this. Yeah, for the for the whole season, if not the for, you know going forward in the NFL in future seasons with what what happened to Tua Tungavailoa, uh, but here's the thing: I don't know that right now it's a huge drop to put John Wolford in there. I just don't. I mean, they can't get much worse. This offense last week I called like it's it was Cooper Cup versus the Bucks. That's exactly what happened. He was literally the only guy who scored a touchdown for him. But that's just the point. It, you know the ball is going to him. It doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. You can't cover him. Uh, get them heavily involved. You're playing a much weaker Arizona defense uh, than the Bucks. You can you can actually move the ball. Uh, McVeigh has very much owned Kingsbury uh, in their matchups together. It's one of those things. I think they Arizona's only beat the Rams once uh, over the last four seasons. Yeah, eleven out season. of twelve. Yeah, yeah, Rams have won eleven out of twelve, and only one, only three of those games were within a touchdown. Like they've been blowouts. Yeah, you've got Kyler Murray uh, yelling at his coach one week, yelling at his top wide receiver the next week. Uh, it's a mess. So as much as I don't love it, as much as I don't love the Rams and how many issues they have, I still have to go with LA here. I still, I'm picking them to cover that three and a half. It's just, you know, McVay dominating Kingsbury. I don't, Wolford, I don't think is a big drop off of Stafford right now because Stafford is still might have a thing with his elbow and he's playing scared because he's under so much pressure. And when Stafford plays pressured, he tends to make uh, turnovers. Wolford, more mobile, can make more plays uh, on the run. Um, not coming in with that, he hasn't been hit, you know, 50 times like like Stafford is. That's actually can be an advantage. Um, and then at the end of the day, I, I just really, Arizona has no one that can cover Cooper Cup. Uh, and I think that's, that's the end, that's the difference. Um, Tyler Higby, between those two guys alone, uh, I think Arizona will be able to score some points, but even if you match up Ramsey on on Hopkins and neutralize basically their only consistent offensive weapon, uh, yeah, I go. I got to go. La. I don't. I don't really see a scenario where Arizona wins this game. Unlike the Bucks with with Brady and all that. I know it's a division game, but man, McVay has owned Kingsbury. The Rams have owned the Cardinals, and this is probably the worst Cardinals team we've seen as far as dysfunction. I got to go. La. Yeah, I, I like this comment from Josh. He said, whichever team loses, you're going to see fights on the sidelines. Uh, Ramsey, in this press conference after losing last week, literally threw the coaching staff and offense under the bus. Yeah. Like, literally. Like, he Rightf didn't pull any Rightfully punches. so, though. He's, he wasn't wrong. But don't yeah. disagree with him. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. But, man, it, 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 now, okay, here we go. Let's change the conversation. Uh, the Rams are sitting at three and five. Uh, one and two in the division. The Cardinals are sitting at three and six, oh and three in the division. And I've I've asked this question several times this year because I want to be able to judge the significance of these records. Whoever loses this is going to be three and six or three and seven. Are they done? Is this kind of like an elimination game in the NFC West? I think the Cardinals are already done. I think the Rams oh. are teetering. 
I think they need to Ooh. have a – because you look at some of the other teams that are surprised us in the NFC, uh, the Vikings running away with the North, um, the, the NFC East, right? You've got uh, the Commanders who are now spicy behind Heineke. Uh, you've got the Giants at 6-2. and two. You've got a lot of these teams that are now competing. The Falcons all of a sudden are, are in a very bad division. Um, and the Bucks, I think, will still get a little bit better. They'll, they'll find at least yeah. some – and then you have the Rams and the Cardinals. Cardinals, I, I'm stick a fork in them. They're done. You know, I've already felt that. How, how, this team has collapsed in the second half. How do? What evidence do we have that a Kingsbury-led team can can actually bounce back in the second half of a season? It didn't even happen in college. If you've ever seen that graphic back at <laughs> Texas Tech, uh, he was horrible in the second half, and now they're going to start at three and six and make a run. No, the Cardinals are done. The Rams are teetering. If they lose this game, yes, you can stick a fork in them as well. As a lifelong Longhorn fan, I have been screaming from the mountaintops that Cliff Kingsbury was a terrible coach before this hire, during this hire, and I will be after this hire. Um, I, a seven-year extension he just got. I, I just so, can't believe so it, man. So now, stupid. for the 49ers' sake, I hope he sticks around. I really do. Yeah. I hope they give him one more year. He's good for business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not even worried yeah. about him at all. He he's that bad. So I'm with you too. I think the Rams, if you know Wofford, uh, don't really care. Don't really care if it's Stafford or yeah. Wofford. To be honest Same. with you, I think they're going to win this game. I, yeah. I just do. Now before we get to our final game, real quick word for my bookie, which I'm so excited about this week. You know sports, and you pick winners all the time. So why not get paid for them at MyBookie? MyBookie has the biggest online selection of odds, contests, for all your sporting and betting needs anytime, anywhere. You can bet on NFL, NCAA, or, this is pretty fun, I love this, you can bet for the fences um, by on the all-new money bag. So what happens is, you go. it's a one-of-a-kind type of opportunity. You just place your bet, spin the wheel, and you get ready to score epic odds on teams, athletes, events, all those things. It just increases those. So it's like a bonus spin to give you even better payouts and better odds, better chances to win. All you got to do is sign up for free today. Use promo code 49ERS or scan the QR code next to me, and you can claim a deposit match of any amount up to $1,000. Again, that's promo code 49ERS to claim your deposit bonus. It's not just a sports book. It's a community. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. All right, uh, just want to take a real quick second. Shout out to my man, Devin. Um, happy birthday to the Marine Corps. I love it. We got the big day coming up tomorrow. Um, and, man, he's just a good dude, a uh, fellow foster parent. This dude, if you came out to any of our Chicago trips, he's the one that handled the grill and the partying for us. His family's going through a lot right now. Uh, praying for you and your wife, man. Uh, she just had surgery, and he's still in the hospital. I hope she's doing well, man. We love you guys. Uh, pull through. Uh, that's all we got to say. And much love to you. Much love to you guys. You are the best people I know. So um, now uh, let, let's transition a little bit. We've been talking on this channel 49ers and Chargers nonstop. Uh, I, I think that this is a very big game mm -hmm. in the big scheme of things. Probably not in playoff standings or divisional records or conference records. But as far as if the 49ers are legit, you're going to find out pretty damn soon. So walk us through, kind of set the stage for this game and let us know your thoughts. Yeah, I, I agree that it's a good measuring stick here. Uh, right off the bat, though, I'm going to say at, at least what I have is the uh, Niners favored by six and a half. Uh, which I'm a little, I don't know what the my bookie line is, but I'm a little. It's seven. Seven. That that's that's a bit rich for me. Um, here's here, I'm, let's start with that's my. That's a take lot on of the points, Chargers. man. Let's, that's let's a lot with, of points. That is a lot of points. Let's start with my take on the Chargers as a whole. Since you guys are NFC West, this might be some new information. Might be helpful for you guys. Uh, the Chargers are one of, and we talked about this in the in the preseason, John. One of the most talented rosters, top to bottom, in the entire NFL. Uh, they have had trouble. Uh, winning games, they've gotten blown out at times, teams they should have beat, like uh, Jacksonville early in the season. Um, they got dominated by the Seahawks earlier this year. To me, it, it it's really it's having me question Brandon Staley as a head coach. Uh, this defense, which is supposed to be you know his his forte, uh, coming from the Rams, has has not been good. They've had some injuries. Yes, Joey Bosa is still out, uh, but Khalil Mack is still there. Uh, they signed J.C. Jackson as one of the the most heralded uh, free agent signees in the offseason. He has been bad, and then he got injured uh, on top of that. Um, 
they, but they still have Derwin James. They, they've got playmakers, but this defense hasn't really come up. Their, their run defense in particular has been, has gotten worse and worse. It's now probably in the bottom uh, five or six in the entire NFL as, as far as stopping the run. And guess who they're playing? A Shanahan uh, offense in, in San Francisco. Who has, who has Christian McCaffrey and, and Debo <laughs> Samuel now at, at full strength? Um, but they still have Justin Herbert. But let's talk about the offensive side of the ball. Herbert, uh, physically one of the most impressive NFL quarterbacks, just right off the bat. He had an amazing first two years. Now he's shown regression. Once again, that comes back to coaching. The the, the pieces around him aren't that different. Uh, they did lose uh, their offensive line, uh, their left tackle, uh, Rashawn Slater for the year. Um, but uh, Salyer, the guy that they've put in, Jamari Salyer, he's, he's been okay. So it's not been a huge drop off at, at left tackle. Um, they still have Austin. Rashawn Eckler, Slater still though. I think Rashawn He's... Slater's the number two left tackle in the league. I thought this yes. was going to be the, the number one versus number two with Trent Williams. I love Slater. That dude, I was so high. I wanted, I had him going before Penny Sewell. And one of my big bets on my bookie was that he'd be the first tackle drafted. He wasn't should have been. Um, but yeah, I hate that he's out. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm huge Slater fan. So I'm in the, the all 22, uh, inaugural all 22 league where we literally draft every single position. It's a dynasty league. Uh, Rashawn Slater was my number two or number three overall pick. Uh, so I, he's on IR for my team, but so I'm, I'm a big Slater fan, but that hasn't been one of the biggest reasons you've still got Eckler producing. Uh, you, yes, you've lost injuries. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, uh, both Keenan Allen still looks like he might not play, which is crazy with this hamstring, the way it's been going. Um, we don't have definitive, you know, whether he's going to be active or not. Uh, but you got Gerald Everett, who, who's, who's the point is you still have weapons. Josh Palmer had over 100 yards, yet they're still not able to consistently dominate teams that like we thought they would. They did play the Chiefs close early, but that's a division game. So the point is, I have questions with the motivations for this team. There was a game where Keenan Allen was in, were out and not playing, and he was tweeting live tweeting his coach's decisions to go for it on fourth down i don't remember what game it was it was fourth and two they had the lead and they're on their own side of the field that that is dissension that is there are some issues yeah. I've, I've heard a few other whispers here and there that this team is just not playing up to their potential when you can see it on paper that being said they're still immensely talented i can't see the 49ers beating this chargers team by by a touchdown or more uh so i'm i'm picking i am picking the niners to win I just like the matchups, especially with Christian McCaffrey there, how vulnerable the Chargers are to the run game. Shanahan, this is probably not going to be a big Jimmy G game. It's going to be a control the, the game on the ground because that's where the Chargers are most vulnerable. Uh, but I just think LA is going to be able to put up points. That Justin Herbert is, is fantastic. He's just that kind of talented quarterback. Even with bad play calling, their offensive coordinator, Joe Lombardi, I have big question marks there at the minimum in the offseason they should look to replace their office of coordinator if they don't get rid of the entire coaching staff we'll see how the season plays out for the chargers uh but the chargers are going to put up points i see this as more like a four point let's say like a 24 to 20 kind of victory for the niners um which is why i'm picking the chargers to cover but i am picking san francisco to win I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, Jorn, thank you so much, man. Appreciate the gift of the super chat. He says, hey, John, glad I could make a live stream. Do you think the Verrett injury changes how Ryan's plays the DBs versus Charger? I do not. Uh, there is zero deep threat, um, which is the biggest concern in kind of a quarters cover three scheme uh, is getting beat deep. There is zero of that. So I expect a lot of press. I hope they press a lot um, on the outside because there's no deep threat. There is not one. And Mike Williams is dangerous in the NFL because he's 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 like uh, Megatron 2.0. Not that he can do everything Megatron can do, but he's a freak athlete size-wise and torches people down the field. Keenan Allen underneath, that opens everything up. They don't have either one of those guys. I do not expect Keenan Allen to play. So yeah, I don't think same. it will change. And I, I love this. Frank says, Dante Johnson, the forgotten 53rd man. I don't like him as an outside corner. I don't mind him at nickel. But um, even there, I want him at safety. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to kind of see how that plays out. Um, it, it's it's interesting to me for sure. because But I don't think it changes anything. I, I really, really don't. And so now I will say this. The Niners have not won by small margins. Uh, if you look at the four wins, they beat the Seahawks by 20. They beat the Rams by 15. They beat the Panthers by 22. And then they beat the Rams by 15 or 17. Like 
they're not close games. Like we're used to the heartbreak kids, right? And all that stuff. Like with the 49ers last two years where every game comes down to the wire, you've had one game that was decided um, by one score or less. And that was the Denver Broncos game when freaking you lose by one point and Jimmy ran out of the back of the end zone and threw a pick six on the same play. Uh, But I don't know, man, the, the, the 49ers have just completely screwed with the entire kind of spread system. And so that's why it's seven points, but I don't want to touch it because yeah. they're just either amazing or they're bad. They're, well, look, they have uh, not look. Look at the, those victories. Sorry to interrupt you there, John. Um, twice against the Rams, who they're you know, Shanahan guess is just what? owning. The yeah, game. but guess what defense the the freaking Chargers Staley. run. This is true. It's, this is it's true. The Rams defense. That is correct. Um, but the other te- the Panthers. I mean, you know, the Panthers just an absolute right. mess. And the Seahawks before they kind of put it all together. Uh, back and they in run two. the Rams offense. Yeah. With Shane Waldron. So, like, th- that's – and so, like, as, as I look at this, which is the same – like, it, it's a little bit of a different offense for sure, but, like, there's it's, lots what of I was similarities. Getting at is, it's the, the the schemes, 100%. The talent level is different, though. I mean, Correct. There's, there's no Austin Eckler on any of those teams that they beat. There's certainly no Justin Herbert on any of those teams that they beat, uh, and which is why, once again, the scheme, the matchup, everything – is very you much mean to say that Baker Mayfield is not like Justin Herbert? Is that what you're implying on this <laughs> surprise, show? Surprise, surprise. I'm, I'm breaking <laughs> I'm breaking news to you guys on 49ers Rush. This is called hashtag analysis, guys. This is why I get paid the big bucks. Uh, no, but I mean, I'm confident that the Niners will win, especially at, Le- at Levi Stadium. Uh, but this, this this Chargers team, you can't count them out. There's two, they're so much more talented than these other teams that the Niners have beat, and it's not close. Uh, Khalil Mack can wreck a game. He single handedly mm. turned around that Falcons game last week yeah. when he ripped the ball out of Drake London's that hands. That was cool. That He's was just cool. like, I'll take this now. Those kind of players are, you know, yes, you have Donald and Ramsey, but Mack can do that kind of thing. But on the offensive side of the ball, none of the teams that you've beaten have had a Herbert and have had an Eckler. Those two guys can be difference makers, which is why I just can't see this game being more than a three or four point yeah. victory for San Francisco. No, I and I I kind of want at some point the 49ers to get that battle tested close game victory. Mm-hmm. Um you know my my projection that I did this morning on uh, the Wayne Breezy show, I said 27-17. I had them by 10 points. Um but I'm not betting that. I'm not asking other people to bet that. That's it 7 points is too much for a 49ers team that is capable of beating themselves on any given Sunday. Forget the Chargers. Like, okay, the Chargers are good. Herbert's great. Um, yeah, he doesn't have his his talented wideouts, but I think the Niners are going to win, okay? And you think the Niners are going to win. I'm staying away from the spread. I just don't like it. Um, it's just you got to wait. You got to have the 49ers kind of validate. And so, you know, whether it's, it's traded or whatever, you wait till a – trend is set up and then they validate that trend we haven't seen that uh, literally two weeks ago you were getting blown out at home on prime time uh, not prime time but the late game to the chiefs that was two weeks ago uh, i guess three weeks ago after the bye week so it, it's it's just Niners like also right. don't have a great record on sunday night football recently so i mean that, for not. whatever reason for whatever reason you have to throw that in there do not. Yeah. And, and that's, there, there's lots of concern there. Um, and I saw somebody else, uh, through the chat, something about the Vikings. Uh, has anyone paid attention to every team? The Vikings beat had injured or missing significant starter. Yeah. I think they have five wins against backup quarterbacks. Mm. Um, which is, yeah, that's, that's interesting, but that's not against them. You play who they put up against you. Right. Um, and you know, I, I will say this, the worst, the low point last year, for the 49ers was when they played the Cardinals with no DeAndre Hopkins, no Kyler Murray and Colt McCoy ran us out of the freaking building any given Sunday and schemes matter. Oh, that (laughs) game. Oh yeah. That one just felt, yeah, I did not like it. Uh, David says Vegas feels like CMC and Debo will go off. I expect them to, um, I I really, really do. I, I really, really do. And like, I'll say this, there's lots of conversation in there. Uh, about Demo and all that stuff. Josh, yeah, Demo is our number two. Is that a good quality number two corner in the NFL? I think he's an average number two starter, but I'll say he earned that job, and I'll say his potential is very, very high. Um, And I see some people saying Demo ain't in it, our secondary is bad. I completely disagree with those assessments. Both those I I 100% incorrect. I'll say Uh, this. Demo won that job. This Chargers team is not set up to take advantage of that. Nope. 
It is yeah. not. Where yeah. is the 49ers defense like susceptible? It's up the middle. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Austin Eckler is not a between the tackles power runner. They do right. not have that on their team. Uh, Sony Michelle and Isaiah Spiller. Bit. Nah. Yeah, but- not every not down yet. kind, guys. Yeah. No, it's not the Falcons. That's not who you're playing against. So, right. And plus, on top of that, you're getting two linebackers back, Trey Greenlaw and Aziz back. That's gigantic. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of have to see how this plays out. Um, now, I do want to say this. and I, Brian, do you have a couple more minutes? Because, man, sure. I would be remiss if we had this show. I know we're going long. We had the Jason Verrett news, all those things. I'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit. Um, I'll say this. You would never guess it that the NFL just it just got announced that the NFL, Roger Goodell, and the Commanders are all being sued by the sued by the Attorney General of Washington D.C. Yeah. Why? Because the NFL insiders, one hundred percent quiet, shut their mouths because they don't want to put this stuff out. I can't. I lost so much respect. Um, instead, they want to talk about the Raiders putting everybody on IR, which is news. But holy freaking cow! Can we talk about? I saw a fair crazy- amount of stuff about it earlier. Did um, you? Okay, yeah. because you know from the rap reports and the Schefters and all that stuff. Well, I like nothing. I like I follow Ari Mayrov. He's a friend of mine. He works for PFF, so he he was on the show. Up. We had him on the show a few years ago. Oh, good nice. Dude. Yeah, yeah, he's good a, dude. he's good a dude. great guy. I've I've had him on my podcast a number of times. Um, but yeah, he put it out there. Uh, I haven't dug into it. I've only read the high level stuff. I read the the statement from the uh, district attorney from DC. Um, I mean, it's not. Surprise! It's it's about time yeah. <laughs> that this got brought to light. Uh, I saw a number of comments that like uh, Daniel Snyder is like this is the last straw. Like he's he's done. I know they're selling the team, but I mean there's this kind of no no turning back, and that the Snyder era hopefully will be over very soon. Um, but the thing, I guess the thing that that did catch my attention was the fact that the NFL was implicated in this, and it was not just centered on the yes. Washington organization. I, I want to read a real quick ex- excerpt from this, and this is from the attorney uh, general. Um, he said, after public reporting revealed sexual misconduct, harassment, misogyny running rampant through decades of the team, the defendants promised D.C. residents in the league they were going to fix this toxic culture, included fully co- cooperation and independent investigation. This was a lie. Instead, mm. the NFL turned a blind eye to Snyder's extensive efforts to not only silence or intimidate witnesses, that's where they're going to get them legally, and the NFL and commanders entered into secret agreement that gave Snyder power to veto the release of any of the results. That's it. Again, you know, I don't want to get too political here. However, Usually where everything hits the fan is in the cover-up. It's not in the doing stuff. It's in the cover-up. And so this is going to go bad. Um, And I hope anybody that took part in it, this is a game where grown men throw a ball, where families take their sons and wear jerseys with their names on it Mm -hmm. and look up to these people. And the people that are profiting from all of it are creating cultures like this. Oh, I hope they all burn. I I hope they burn. Yep. Um, yeah. Whew. It's All about right. time for a reckoning there. And, you know, hopefully this causes ripples across other organizations that maybe have stuff that we haven't heard about, uh, you know, in, in similar workplace cultures uh, around the NFL. So I, I hope this leaves a mark. I hope this is something that can only make the league better, a better place yes. to work, a better place to be a part of, um, because it's a game we love so much, John. That's why you and I do what we do. And this is badly needed. And it, it should start with Washington. And I hope there's a clean sweep. Uh, and a new ownership and, and start fresh in Washington. And I will say this too. The 49ers are not perfect by any stretch. But I will say this. I wear this with pride. Um, I, I get stuff for my kids and have them wear it with pride. I'm very, very proud uh, to be a fan of this team with the way that they have conducted themselves. And, you know, I think it started with Ruben Foster, the very first draft that the 49ers had. They gave him ample opportunity, stood beside him. When Ruben did what he did, I thought that was just an automatic transforming presence in this team in front office and locker room that, hey, they don't do this. And every year or whatever, we go through draft profiles and we're digging into all these, you know, players' uh, history and all their things. Niners don't touch that crap. They don't touch it. Now, I don't I do believe people need second chances. That's all I'm saying at all. However, uh, don't put that stuff in front of my family because I will not support that. And I am very thankful that uh, since Lynch and Shadyhan arrived, that has been the case. Uh, they're not all, you know, the best people on the planet. That's all I'm saying at all. 
but I do have pride. Um, and I, I love it, man. I absolutely love as, it. Now, as a Dolphins fan, just real quick, I, I love my team. I do not love ownership. I I can't stand Stephen Ross. So he's, yeah, I am he's not proud on that side. I am not. That, that guy is just a bad human being on multiple levels. We don't have to get into that right now. Well, the good news is you got a great head coach. Yes, um, I am very happy with our coaching staff and our players right now. Very happy. I'm excited. And I, and I got to throw this out there. You know, I forgot to bring this up earlier, but uh, we had a meeting last night for our 49ers versus Dolphins party here in Santa Clara. Really, really excited about that. John Taylor, Eric Wright, uh, Duper. We got Mark Clayton. Um, it's going to be an absolute blast. I'm very, very excited about that. Get your tickets, 49ersRushRoadTrip.com. Um, that's going to be fun. We got our tailgate, as always, out in the blue lot. So, a little bit longer show, but I, I think it was important. Bride, I want to say thank you. Any closing remarks before we jump out of here, my friend? No, I just, uh, I'm worried the season's going to be over before we know it. This has been a crazy upside down, topsy turvy season. I love every second of it. Put it in my veins. Let's get ready for week 10. I love it, man. And for everybody else out there, man, and the Verrett family, just want to say thank you for, you know, letting us have Jason Verrett for as long as we have. I hate that it didn't end the way that we wanted it to. Um, but uh, until next time, faithful, stay strong. Mm -hmm.